Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is we review the listings of 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series that show up on Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids or Craigslist, whatever, and um, and go through those. And we look for issues that are that are common. Uh, we look for things that maybe aren't being disclosed. And we do all this in order to you know help inform you uh, should you be in a position to be buying one of these vehicles. Um, you know they, they are older. There's there's you know there's always lots of things to you know, to point out and to look at on these. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the vehicle that we're going to study today, which is this 1996 uh, FZJ80. Uh, it is an 80 series, currently bid up to 15250 bucks with uh, six days left. Um, so let's go over the, the high level details. Uh, this has got 181,000 miles. Uh, everything else, uh, you know, is more or less uh, kind of factory and standard. Uh, it does have this TGM uh, steel front bumper that you can see in the photo, and it's got a, you know, Pioneer stereo. Um, regarding some of the details here in the listing, uh, it says that it's got automatic climate control. We'll, we'll prove that that's not the case. And um, let's see, it's now offered by the selling dealer with the owner's manual, a toolkit, and service records. Um, the selling dealer acquired the truck in 2023. Um, so it looks like they, yeah, they haven't had it very long and they, they bought it from whoever got it in, um, uh, it looks like in 2021 or so. Uh, anyway, the truck's got this, it's hard to tell uh, with the photos, but it's got this dark emerald pearl, which is a dark green uh, in low light conditions, such as like this overcast day, it can sometimes look like black. Um, let's see, Carfax report shows minor damage in March of 2021, uh, which the selling dealer states affected the rear bumper and they note part of the driver's side corner of the rear bumper was repainted. Uh, let's see anything else. It looks like some rear brake work in 2016, the dampers, which I presume were the shocks were replaced in January of, 20, or of 2019. Uh, and then the front brake pads and rotors were replaced in October of 2020 and the front axle sills and wheel bearings were replaced in June of 2022. Uh, Let's see, anything else? We've got the Pioneer stereo. The seller reports the sunroof does not work. Oh, and by the way, we skipped this, but yeah, it's located in St. Louis, Missouri and has a clean Missouri title. Uh, let's see, yeah, so the seller reports the sunroof does not work and will need servicing. And um, yeah, and that's covered in one of the videos. Uh, let's see, uh, work in 20, July 2020 included replacing the alternator belt, throttle body gasket, and radiator cap. Yeah, super minor work there. And let's see, records indicate the muffler and tailpipe were replaced in June of 2019. So we'll kind of keep that in mind regarding, you know, rest considerations. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Carfax, uh, see where this thing has lived its life. Um, so it looks like, yeah, Missouri, Maryland, and Nevada per the Carfax report. Uh, and there's some states here at the beginning. So it looks like, you know, it's sold into Virginia originally. Uh, first owner had it for, what, roughly five years um, and put, yeah, almost 70,000 miles on it. And then it went, stayed in Virginia, but a different owner, it looks like, in 2001. And, yeah, was there for, yeah, what, 10 years and oh, only 10,000 miles. So, yeah, it more or less sat in a garage uh, in Culpeper, <laughs> Virginia, it looks like. Um, and then, yeah, still in Maryland, and then looks like it got auctioned in, in 2015. Um, yeah, this, this name here, this Feasterville Travos PA, um, if, if you look at listings of these Land Cruisers, mostly 80 series on, on eBay, um, yeah, there is a kind of like a dealer there that kind of focuses on these. And they usually present these vehicles really well, but they never show the undercarriage. Um, but anyway, it looks, looks like, yeah, maybe that's the same spot. Let's, we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, mileage is consistent. looks like it went to Nevada. Um, that's where it had the exhaust system replaced and some of this work in 2019. And then let's see, still in Nevada through 2021. And then in what, 2022, it came to Missouri. Um, so yeah, I would presume, yeah, there's some sort of sell that happened that got it to uh, the current selling dealer. Um, all right, so regarding this, um, this 128,000 in April of 2015 auction, I'm um, pulling this vehicle up in vehiclehistory.com. Uh, shows yeah, one historical sales listing. So it looks like yeah, roughly at about that time and that mileage, uh, it was listed at 17,000. And looking at these photos, you know, that lines up really well with that um, one eBay seller um, out of uh, Feasterville, uh, Trevose in, in Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, so that's that. The history looks pretty clean besides that that little accident. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump in the photos. Oh, there are some videos uh, 
on this uh, no cold start video he does show it starting up and then uh, this video here he goes through all of the electronic functions um, he doesn't go like on the windows for instance he doesn't take them all the way down take them all the way up he just kind of shows them cracking um, you know and then going back up so, I mean it's a good test that it works but yeah it doesn't really indicate uh, you know how well they work also on um, yeah this first video he shows the antenna going up and down when he drives the antenna down it does the clicking meaning that the like the auto stops you know broken on there so it still seems like it works but uh, yeah it's not 100 percent there and then obviously he mentioned the the sunroof uh, in the listing but also in the video um, yeah, regarding the photos, um, they're, they're not the best photos. Um, I actually recorded this, this video just a moment ago, but well, quote recorded, uh, didn't actually hit record. So we're kind of going to go through this relatively quickly. Um, but anyway, the, the photos, you know, there's a lot of blurry ones that somehow ended, you know, in the stack and, um, you know, that's all this overcast day. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell what's, what's what especially with this dark paint. But looking here on the front, um, generally it looks pretty straight. Um, you know, this lower valence panel, you know, all the gaps, it all it all looks pretty good. Nothing really consistent um, there. Um, you can see this TJM brand bumper. It looks like it, um, you know, can accommodate a winch. So I'd assume that there's some sort of cutout behind this license plate. Um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, the paint looks, you know, all pretty good and original. Um, and all the body panels, you know, seem to be, you know, consistent color. Um, looking here at the rear at this, uh, this bumper, you know, we did note in the Carfax history that there was, you know, some sort of accident affecting the back. Um, I feel like this color here in the back is more blue than it should be. Uh, the factory color on these is more of like a, a gray. And it's hard to tell because we don't have the front bumper to reference. But this feels very much more like a, a moon mist metallic, which wouldn't have been the color uh, on this on this vehicle for these bumpers. Um, so that was probably all repainted. I know he mentioned that only the driver's side corner was repainted, um, but yeah, I, I kind of get the sense based on the color that the you know, the whole rear bumper was was repainted. Um, and it's kind of it's hard to tell whether or not um, yeah this this part this still part was you know painted to match or not. Yeah, otherwise on the outside and the exterior it looks pretty good. Nice detail shot here of the front driver's side. You can see, you know, 180,000 miles worth of rock chips. Uh, same thing here on the on the on the hood. Um, so that all kind of like lines up based on the on the age. Uh, looking here at the hood, this gap here between the cowl and the uh, the hood seems like it's a little little large. You can really see it jump out at you here in this photo. Um, yeah, we'll get another another look at it here in a second. But these rocker panels look pretty good. I see a little like discoloration here on the back uh, passenger side uh, rear door. It's probably yeah, nothing, just people getting in and out of it. Um, <clears throat> you can see it's got this little film. Um, so that's present, you know, on on some of the sun, or the some of these vendor flares. Uh, I presume this is on the. Um, yeah, so this shot's the passenger side, obviously, but on the driver's side, it's kind of peeling away. Um, so it's kind of good that it's there, but yeah, I think ultimately sometimes it can cause more, you know, paint damage, but at least it's on the flare and not on the body. Uh, looking at that cowl gap again, that that's way too big, I think. Uh, not not sure what's going on there. The, the front shots didn't really show the, um, you know, the hood, you know, kind of sitting too far forward. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Uh, moving here to the to the hood, not the hood, the the roof. Um, generally, it seems like the the paint's in good shape. Um, the front part is yeah, it's pretty pretty shiny. But yeah, further back, you know, if you're looking at this other photo, you know, it does seem a little bit more hazy, which is what you'd expect. Sometimes this is the part that gets waxed, not the <laughs> not the back, especially you know with the the roof rails. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, this uh, yeah this dark emerald pearl paint seems to be you know holding up just just fine. And you can see there's you know some scratches and stuff. Um, not I'm not quite sure what to make of this discoloration here at the foot of this roof rack rail. Um, yeah, I know these can kind of like you know rust out and the in the holes that hold this you know roof rack to the roof. You know those can sometimes rust out. So it's you know I'm not quite sure why it's discolored here. Um, yeah, along the foot of that, but something to investigate and something to keep in mind.
Yeah, moving through these photos on the on the rear hatch, nothing really out of out of place, um, especially on a vehicle that's been in an area where there can be corrosion. You know, this is the spot here along this you know window gasket in the rear you know upper hatch where they like to rest. I don't I don't see anything there. Um, same thing on this. You know, it looks all you know pretty pretty clean in these photos. Although yeah, I will note they're not focused on that, and yeah, they are kind of blurry. Here's the detail shot of that back corner again. I don't I don't think that moon mist is the right color there. Um, so yeah, I'd presume, you know, in that damage, all that was re repainted. Uh, n yeah, interesting wiring, wiring connections there. Um, yeah, definitely do something different there if you p pick this up. But otherwise, you know, these photos, it all looks pretty, yeah, like it's in pretty good shape. Um, yeah, surprisingly good for, yeah, something that's been in yeah, Maryland and in Virginia. And there's that gap again. Again, it just feels, feels a little wide. Not quite sure why that's the case. Uh, new exhaust pipe, uh, chips in the glass, uh, photos of the wheels. Is that a... What's, what's going on with that lug nut? Maybe it's like a locking type. I'm not sure why that's different, but it is. Let's look at the other wheels. It's hard to tell if there's something out of place on those. Uh, good on them for providing this photo. Um, you know, this is showing the um, kind of that pinch weld in front of the rear wheels. That's a spot where these like to rust out. Um, yeah, so good, good on them for including that. Okay, moving to the interior. Uh, steering wheel looks like it's in good shape. That's a good indicator for it not having been parked outside. Um, you know that more or less matches with the condition of the paint on the on the on the roof and the hood that we saw. Um, yeah, it looks looks pretty good in here. Uh, it's got this aftermarket cup holder that covers up like the what the power and the ECT switches there. Or the um, you know the second gear start. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of these you know 3D printed things, but I know these things don't have any cup holders, so that's that's a you know nice touch, I guess. Um, yeah, steering wheel looks good. This leather, I get the sense, is a replacement seat cover. Um, yeah, it's not quite the original. And, you know, you can especially see, you know, here you can see kind of like the, the pleating and the creases in the factory leather that I presume is here on the back seats. Um, yeah, that's not present there. Um, but good, good match. I believe that center console is probably original. And um, yeah, I mean, it looks, looks good nonetheless. Uh, I notice a little uh, fraying in the seat belt. Um, you can see it a little bit better here in this photo. But otherwise, the door jams look pretty good. Uh, carpet looks reasonably clean. And yeah, really a good match in the leather, though, between the door panel and the, and the replacement uh, seat leathers. That's, that's nice. Yeah, so I see a little split here in the weather strip. Probably not a big deal, but yeah, you could replace that if you, if you wanted. Um, see a little bagginess on the, on the seat cover here. Uh, let's see if we get a better shot of that. Um, yeah, so it's kind of bunched up here and yeah, it's not the best fit and that's kind of how these replacement seat leathers go. Um, but yeah, it's better than it being all cracked and nasty. All right. So yeah, 181,000 miles. Um, uh, yeah, this, this photo showing the engine not on, but the engine warm. Um, and then yeah, engine started reasonable idle, good fuel pressure, uh, oil pressure. Uh, yeah, this is interesting here, seeing this discoloration on the front of this gasket here on the windshield. Um, definitely look into this, make sure that, um, yeah, you're not getting active leaks when it rains. Um, yeah, it, it shouldn't necessarily be discolored like this, but it could also just be, you know, condensation, you know, having accumulated air and drip down. But definitely interesting to see. I do note a little nick here on the dash. Uh, it's not the normal crack that you see going along the length of the vehicle. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm noting the aftermarket speaker cut in here and replacing the original covers. Um, and then, yeah, confirmation that there is no um, yeah, automatic temperature control on this vehicle. That would have been reserved for the, I think, the collector's editions and the LX 450s of this generation. Uh, yeah, nice, nice photo there. <laughs> um, yeah, so Pioneer aftermarket stereo. I mean, the car could use a little bit of a detail. Um, I know this tray is also not sitting in there the way it should. I think for the most part, it's pretty clean. Um, these nets are sagging like we see on almost all of these. Also, I noticed, looks like there's some snaps here on the seat cover. Um, and yeah, it looks like that's not, you know, where it needs to be. Uh, second row looks, you know, like nearly mint, like nobody ever used it. Uh, almost makes me think that, yeah, this leather was replaced too. But I, I don't think any of the seat covers that are on the market are reproducing um, yeah, kind of the little creasing that, that the factory seats do in that leather on the seat back. 
but yeah, second row looks yeah looks clean. Uh, yeah, you can see the downside of these WeatherTech mats. Like if they don't lay totally flat, and when the seat you know comes back all the way, um, yeah, they can get bunched up, and yeah, they kind of look like garbage. But another um, 3D printed um, cup holder looks like that one's been you know drilled in and installed in the back of the console. Uh, not not my cup of tea, but yeah, I know again these don't have any cup holders. Uh, visors look like they stay up, uh, headliners and you know, it looks like it's pretty clean. Um, I, I do note these like four little dots here it makes me think that maybe this cover's been, you know, replaced and pulled off at some point. Um, not sure why he's got a photo with a, with a cloth over the sunroof. Um, however, I do note that the plastic trim and the back part of this has been, has been cracked and damaged. Uh, driver footwell carpet looks clean. You know, just some minor staining looks, looks good though. Uh, same thing with the passenger side. Yeah, it looks looks good. Uh, rear driver door. Yeah, similarly, a little bit of staining in the carpet, but otherwise, um, yeah, it looks looks like that's good. Do see a little chip paint here on the on the rocker panel, and then yeah, carpet in the second row looks good. Uh, crack in this um, this door handle cover. Uh, I do note the VIN sticker and yeah, big aftermarket speaker cut in. Yeah, a, a cracked cover usually means that the door panel has been taken off or that might have been to replace like the door lock actuator or, you know, grease the window channels or replace the window regulator. Um, yeah, it could be, could be anything. But yeah, usually an indicator that the door card's been taken off. Um, little damage here at the top of the door card on the, uh, the passenger front door. Um, but yeah, not seeing any indications of yeah, paintless dent repair. Yeah, this picture, they're trying to show this bottom seam, uh, but yeah, it's too washed out to be able to tell. But I do see the, um, the other mint sticker, which is, which is good to see. Um, moving to the back, I also see this covers um, cracked as well. So I'd presume this, this door panel had been taken off as well. Um, yeah, also seeing this fabric kind of you know, being un, untucked, um, yeah, leads me to think that this door cards also been taken off. I do note the Vince sticker, not seeing any, you know, paintless dent repair, you know, marks on this door either. Um, but I do note that the, the light, the courtesy light bulb has been, uh, is burnt out. Just minor wear on these door cards in general. I do see the Vince sticker there. Um, yeah, everything, everything seems like it's in, in place. You can see in this, you know, just in this little shot, you can see how this uh, this dark emerald pearl can kind of sometimes have like these blue hints, uh, you know, green, and then obviously the the, the black. It's it's kind of a cool. It's pr a pretty cool, pretty cool paint. Um, although, yeah, usually it uh, when it sees too much sun, it yeah it kind of falls apart. Um, all right, so back to these covers for the rear speakers. Those dots. I don't think are supposed to be there. Um, I tried at one point to take one of those covers off on a, on a junked vehicle. I couldn't figure out how to get them off. So yeah, be careful if you're trying to do that. And then I do notice uh, here in the, the far ground or the, you know, the background of the photo, um, the grab handle is missing the cover. And I think there was one, yeah, like right there in the, the um, front passengers missing it as well. Not a big deal, but just something that's missing. All right, going through those, these photos. Um, yeah, rear, rear carpet looks like it's pretty clean. I do see a bunch of like, you know, hair, pet hair um, in these photos. Um, so that might be worth cleaning up if that bothers you. Um, would like a better photo of this grab handle, uh, you know, this little latch to open the rear door, but yeah, it seems like it's fine. There, I mean, there is, looks like maybe some deposits or some residue, but it's probably not rust based on everything we've seen, excuse me, everything we've seen so far. Yep, rear carpet on the uh, yeah, the lower tailgate looks good. It looks like there's some uh, extra hubcap covers. Um, yeah, this is a good spot to look and see, you know, maybe if there was any damage from, you know, whatever accident was here on this back corner. I don't see anything. I see, you know, like some chips here in the paint, um, you know, just some like minor scratches, but yeah, you know, this all looks as it should. I'm trying to think where the VIN sticker is for this lower tailgate. I think it's like inside here and I don't, I don't, I don't think we've had a good photo. And if it's like not on this surface, it's, you know, on the vertical part of that where it's out of frame and you can't see it, but yeah, I presume that hasn't been replaced. All right, moving to the engine bay. It looks like the headliner sagging a little bit, but otherwise, yeah, this seems pretty tidy. The thing that jumps out at me the most here in this photo is this radiator. Um, 
do not mess around with the cooling system on these uh, FCJ 80s. Um, definitely, you know, stay on top of um, yeah your cooling system. So make sure your water pumps replaced. Make sure the fan clutch works right. Make sure you've got good clean coolant in there. Make sure all your hoses are good. You just don't want these things overheating at all ever. Um, that's kind of like a death sentence for the head gasket. But otherwise, seems pretty pretty clean in here. A um, little bit of like maybe like a coolant leak. Um, this uh, kind of like switching valve, you know, they can get brittle. So that, that's probably what's going on. Um, you know, it's, it's cracked and it's just letting a little coolant through, but it doesn't look like it's anything significant. And then I will mention I did see the VIN stickers on both fenders. Uh, and yep, so that's, that's good to see. Um, this is kind of a cool photo. You know, we talk a lot about this main engine wiring harness. It's good to see it's being retained here. You can even see the clip that keeps it away from the EGR pipe. So you can see the nut on the EGR that kind of connects it into the intake manifold. You can see the pipe, you know, going back. And then you can see this wiring harness, how it comes across, and then it kind of dives down. So just make sure it's not in contact. Looks like this one's fine. Looks like this is original. This is how it should look like when it's brand new. But yeah, nice clean photo of that. And if, if you're like not having, um, you know, if you're having like your, and it's kind of hard because the D light bulb on the instrument cluster sometimes goes out, but yeah, you've got like injector wiring going through here. You've got, you know, some of your other like, you know, timing wiring and, um, yeah, obviously your gear selector stuff comes through here as well. So, uh, those are signs that that wiring is being burned. I, you know, I do see like a little on this rubber, I saw it in the other photos. I do see like a little, you know, like rust tinge on this. Um, I think this is a rubber seal here. Yeah, just something to look at if you're if you're picking this up. All right, not crazy about the blurry photo, but generally not seeing any, you know, orangish, uh, you know, hues. Um, yeah, this this photo's too washed out. This one's a little bit better. Um, looks like the it's been like undercoated. Uh, at some point, which can be both a good and a bad thing, but doesn't doesn't look too scary. Um, you know, front axle looks okay. And, you know, notice a little little corrosion here. Um, but you know, like these tow hooks, and you can see the fasteners behind there. Although this would have been probably from the this is the front bumper. So you know, depending on when that was replaced, you know, within the last couple of years, I mean, this this stuff shouldn't be too scary. But seeing the threads on this original bolt here, you know, it looks like it's in in pretty good shape. Uh, I do know a little little wetness here on this front stabilizer and then also here on this axle. Um, so my thought is that, yeah, like this, and you can see it's kind of glistening here on this uh, little uh, cover. So that can be from power steering components. Um, you know, there's kind of, you know, hoses in the power steering pump in the reservoir kind of in this area. Um, this wetness down here in the back, more towards the axle, that could be more of a, um, you know, like front um, uh, oil pump. Uh, cover and that's a very common leaker on these things but midship looks you know reasonably uh, clean uh yeah too blurry to tell really what's going on there uh yeah but yeah I mean, these these photos they're not that great this is what you want to see <laughs> all right um yeah, more blurry photos um but again looking at like this exhaust like this is what you want to see um, you know, this doesn't look too scary. This, these exhaust components have come apart and something that's really rusted out, you know, it's not going to look you know, nearly this good. All right. So VIN stickers and labels, yada, yada, yada. Uh, owner's manuals, some yeah, some paperwork. Looks like some yeah, good money has been spent on, on this stuff. Fix power steering leaks. Yeah, you know these these trucks. In order to keep them on the road and keep them running without you know, without leaking and other issues, yeah, you do have to put in some some time and money for sure. But yeah, go through those receipts if you're interested in per picking this up. Um, get the uh yeah this uh this lug nut wrench in the bag so it doesn't you know cling around back there and it looks like there's a winch uh mount for the uh for the front bumper and the little sunshade 
Uh, so yeah, there you go. Back up to the top. Um, yeah, pretty clean, pretty clean cruiser. Uh, regarding the rust, it's it's far better than what I thought um, you would have for that age. Um, you know, living in in Virginia and Maryland, that's probably due to the fact that it spent ten years at only a thousand miles per year when it was in Virginia. Um, so yeah, this again, low low mileage, good condition. Yeah, this this could go this could go pretty good and you know it would be a good pickup for somebody um biggest downsides are that it's yeah it's got that little you know rear rear damage and then yeah no no front uh front and rear lockers but other than that yeah it looks like original paint looks pretty clean so i think this thing will go for you know, like twenty seven thousand five hundred. um this seller is the same seller that sold that uh, 100 series that was pretty rusty that one had lived in the midwest i think and yeah that one like went for four grand more than what i was expecting but i think yeah twenty seven thousand five hundred is a good price for this was there anything i missed uh let me know uh curious to see what you think you know price wise on this and you know whether or not yeah this would be a good buy but thanks for watching and hope you have a good day